Stand up to operate. Suction, please. The ragnow is slipping. Sterility! Sterility! Hey Pod Squad, I'm Diksha, a third year podiatric medical student. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about our surgery experience, specifically our general surgery experience. Are you surprised? <laughs> because so were we. We do get to have general surgery rotation. It's a lot of fun and actually it is important for us because as we are going to be physicians, surgeons in the future, we do need to rotate and learn about all of the etiquette and the nuances of being in the OR. And a lot of it is so much fun so I want to bring you through the experience with us. The days start pretty early. <laughs> it was around 6 a.m. for us. We'd have to wake up and drive pretty far because we had to cross the bridge to get to San Francisco. And I know that might not be the situation for everyone, but for us, it got pretty hectic because we'd have long drives over there and then long drives back and we're always just so exhausted because things can go wrong with patients or things can work out, but it's just just you were humbled through the process, right? <laughs> but it's exciting because this almost feels like it's our first time feeling like we're full on physicians. By the time we get there, we're already ready to basically scrub down for the cases that start at 7.30. So you want to prepare for everything. We get there, we check for the cases. And the first day that we got there, it was overwhelming because there are so many cases every day with so many types of surgeries going on. There were cases by surgeons who are working on the eyes or the lower extremities from orthopedic surgeons or there were surgeons who were specifically for the hands. There was just so much that we could have chosen from. So every day we'd split between each other. We just get to choose what we do. And that was what made it fun, just anticipating everything at first. And then we'd, um, we'd go into the PACU and we'd wait. And that was the kind of the waiting room for the patients before they were taken into the OR. At that point, we waited for the surgeons to come in and so that we can meet them for the first time and ask and request for going into their surgeries. We either observed or we would scrub in. And as much as scrubbing in is exciting, so is observing. And we had a lot of fun doing that as well because while you're observing, you get to watch everything that's going on around you. And I really enjoyed that process as well. I got to see what the anesthesiologist did, got to see what the nurse tech did, got to see the residents, physician assistant, and fourth year medical students because they obviously have priority and they have a lot of little things that they have to learn during that time. They have to impress the surgeons and everyone around them. It's quite a fascinating process to watch, but I got to see incredible cases. There were, for example, hand surgeries. You would be surprised how similar they are to the feet. What I noticed was the way they wrapped that really stuck out to me, the way they did their dressings at the end. That was similar to how we often dress our patients towards the end of our surgeries for podiatry and or for the lower extremity in general. And a lot of the incisions that they made had to be fairly precise because at the end of the day, what are patients really looking at right other than their face they also want their hands to be pretty aesthetically pleasing and same with their feet for the summer days it's interesting to see what kind of incisions that the surgeon would choose when i got there i wanted to make sure that i was already in the room ready for whatever was thrown at me after scrubbing down it was only my second time <laughs> the first time i scrubbed down was during orientation i was frantically trying to scrub down and get everything on as quickly as possible, my eye covering, my mask, and running into the room. First thing I realized was, oh no. There is so much that is blue out there that I know I'm not supposed to touch. How am I supposed to get to the scrub tech without getting in trouble? Because I need to get my gloves on. I need to get my gown on if I want to be in the surgery. And that was quite terrifying because when you walk in everyone's kind of yelling at you because you're new you're the new person in the team right and someone was explaining it to me where the new one is the one that gets caught the new one is the one that gets picked on 
and it's all part of the process. It's almost like a hazing process <laughs> for a sorority or fraternity. That's what it felt like. And I walked in and then I felt like it was in a war zone because everyone's telling me, ah, oh, watch out, don't touch that, don't touch this. Oh no, you're getting too close to anything before. I, I mean, I didn't even touch anything at that point yet. I had just walked in, but it all makes sense as you go through surgery. You do want everything to stay sterile and you don't know if the new person was explained anything properly. So I get it. it it took me some time to understand that I should show them that I'm taking careful steps. While I was watching surgeries and I was at the OR table, whew, let's just say I definitely felt like I was uh, I was falling in love because <laughs> you see how the surgeon makes those precise incisions. You see how the surgeon carefully takes each layer of the skin and moves it aside. And in my head, for some reason, I assumed that they would just, almost like how we cut meat, you know, just, just cut everything apart and get to, for example, if we're working on the bones, just get to the bones. It's nothing like that. Everything is piece by piece and you have to ensure that you're not hitting a nerve or a vessel. Incredible to watch just how the team works together. They're handing it off and the way they hand it off is so precise as well and how everyone's making sure that they're watching their surroundings at all times. That was something I wasn't used to because I don't know about you, but I I'm just used to, I kind of have laser vision. Like I'm just focusing on what's in front of me. You have to be looking around you at all times. You have to be checking the clock, making sure that you don't have, for example, you don't have the tourniquet on for way too long, making sure that you're paying attention to the pulse, oxygen, just all of that at once. Because even though you have a lot of help, you want to be responsible for your own case and every action you're taking. But then there's you as the student. That's when it gets a little tricky. You're wondering, hmm, should I move the light over? Or is, is that even my place? I don't think I should be doing that. Should I take the suction and suction out the blood right now? Oh no, I think I'm gonna get in the way. So a lot of it is just critical thinking and making sure you're on top of it and that you've slept properly <laughs> because whew, there's just so much going on at the same time. And that is what makes the surgery experience really cool. The times that I would shadow or scrub in for the orthopedic surgeries were really cool because as long as they didn't have residents around helping, I got the chance to retract. And retracting might sound boring to all of you, but you learn so much in that process as well. You have to learn how to respond to the doctor and the physician assistant and the nurses at the right time, right? So if the surgeon's moving to this side, you don't wanna get in the way. And so a lot of it is just working on the spot. And then the hard part is knowing when to be humble as well in realizing that there's so much to learn all the time. Even when I was observing, I made sure I'd always ask the nurses questions. I didn't know about the tools. I didn't know about the suture material they'd use and the sizes. I didn't know why we were making certain cuts or why when we were doing a laparoscopy, why we would just stop the laparoscopy, set it aside, and we would just start cutting. Why would we do all of that? There is just so much that you're constantly learning. And actually, speaking of which, I wanted to talk about the laparoscopic procedures that we shadowed in and we scrubbed into. The laparoscopic procedures are really cool because you feel like you're watching someone playing a video game almost. And when I was watching the doctors, they had, so you have this device that's like a camera that is inserted into the person, into the patient's body, and you're moving the camera up and down. And it's really cool because there's screens all around you near the OR table. Everything that you learned in anatomy just came to life. A lot of the procedures we saw were cholecystectomies. So we got to see gallbladder removals and you're you're trying to take everything you learned in anatomy, even though, yes, we, we were in the cadaver labs. We learned all of that. It's something's different about seeing it in person. It's a whole different world in there. Well, while you're watching the surgeon do this procedure with the laparoscopic device, you're watching them hold, they're, they're holding a retractor in one hand, they're telling you to hold the camera in one hand, they're also suctioning at the same time and somehow this is all happening internally. You're not seeing, you, you have barely made a cut on the patient's body. It's just a tiny cut that all of this is inserted into. 
and you're watching the magic of how this is all working. And the surgeon also is able to suture internally in the body. How cool is that? And something cool just to let you know is if any of you out there are gamers, apparently people say that you will be really good with this device and these procedures because you're really good with your hand-eye coordination. So there's this camera technology device. <laughs> it's called the C-Arm and it takes x-rays while you are doing the procedure. So while, say if you're doing, if you're inserting screws, and that happens of course in orthopedic surgeries, they're inserting the screws, but at the same time, they want to make sure it's aligned, right? So they're using the C-arm while you're in the surgery. You want to make sure you have your lead armor on. Oh, so that experience, whew, that was exhausting because I'm a little person and the lead vest, was so heavy, <laughs> it was so heavy, and at times it was falling off, and it's not like, it's not like I could really reach over and get it, so I'm just half, I'm leaning over, and I'm just hoping that the surgery ends soon, and trying not to bother anyone, because you're just a little noob in the surgery room, and you know, you don't wanna take up extra space, and extra time. You get over that over time, because you realize you're not the only one making mistakes, we're all human and the even the surgeon will sometimes realize oh i forgot i don't know i've i wore my fun little scrub caps and i shouldn't be wearing this so they would ask a nurse to help them and the nurse would leave the room and get the cap for them or whoever's observing the case or something like that right i was scared that i couldn't even open my mouth i didn't even ask any questions i was that terrified but it's not that bad it's really not if you do make a mistake you can ask and as long as you're showing that you're noticing and you're aware, it's fine. Now moving on to my height. So I'm a little short. There were times where I'd lean over, I'm trying to lean over to get access to, say it's the knee and for some reason it's the left knee and I'm way over here on the, on the right of the patient and I can't really see anything. It was embarrassing, but I definitely had to ask for a stool and sometimes I'd have to double the stools <laughs> because I was so short. That's what they want you to do because if you didn't do that, I mean, how are you even gonna help the doctor? So again, don't let your nerves get to you. It's okay. One of the most memorable experiences I had, are you ready for this? So there was this orthopedic surgeon that might be my idol at this point because she's that she's that cool. She is literally, she is such a leader. Everyone told me I had to prepare properly when it came to sterility. I didn't know what that meant because there were still some things that we didn't learn. Uh, Yona, for example, didn't know that, because we weren't taught about it, but we didn't know that there was a beard covering that you're supposed to wear. So he had a little, little of his beard exposed. I'm going to give his experience first. He walked into the OR room and probably within a few seconds of being in there, he was kicked out because <laughs> He didn't realize that we weren't told beforehand and a lot of people didn't know. Normally, if someone likes facial hair, they just, honestly, they just remove it if they're doing these cases because it's just so much easier than trying to cover everything up. Hip surgeries tend to be a lot more prone to infections. So when you're doing a hip surgery, surgeons and the entire staff are incredibly careful about it. So after Yona got yelled at and scolded about it he left and we had this whole session where we learned about what we should be doing instead and the way to be a hundred percent well i mean not a hundred percent sterile but as sterile as we can be yona was nice enough to make sure that it worked out for me so that i could actually see this procedure without annoying anyone or upsetting them and that took a lot a lot of fixing of everything i was wearing in my attire and shifting my hair, my sideburns were still in the way and I never knew my sideburns would be such a problem for me. <laughs> it was a fun process because the charge nurses were trying to help. They were shifting our masks a specific way and then another nurse would come and fix it according to what they knew. So for some reason, <laughs> it was one of, one of the cooler challenges that we did because we weren't sure if I was going to be able to see this, but I did and I found out that the surgeon actually really needed the help of podiatric 
medical students who came in because they didn't have a lot of that help throughout the pandemic. So also keep that in mind, something that we are lucky to experience. So if you're able to go into these surgeries during this time or at all, even after the pandemic, know that it's a blessing that we're able to go into these scenarios when these surgeons have to trust us and believe that we'll follow everything and not get them in trouble, right? Because this experience is something that will change your life forever, whether or not you want to do surgery. Thanks for sticking with me and watching this entire video. I know it was quite long, but I wanted to make sure those of you who are interested in medical school and interested in surgery get to hear about this experience because it is important to me that you all learn from it. And hopefully you can learn even more if you stick around for our next video coming out that will be tricks and tips about the surgery rotation. That's honestly what I wanna talk about the most, but I had to bite my tongue about that because the, it would have been way too long at that point. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so you can follow us through our entire journey and make sure you share with other people so that they can get the kind of experience that you're getting out of this. And also make sure to follow us on Instagram if you haven't already. Pod Squad, signing out.